In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything we know about the summer 2024 DLC update for GTA Online, including when the update is going to be releasing and some details that Rockstar didn't share with us, but we can gather from the newswire and more. So let's talk about when the update is going to be releasing. Rockstar Games actually corrected their newswire just minutes after releasing the original post. Originally, the newswire said that the update would be beginning next month, and since they wrote the article on June 5th, 2024, we could imply that was supposed to happen in July. Well, again, they went back and actually corrected it to now saying much more later this month, confirming the update would be arriving in June. And now that begs the question, when in June would this update be arriving? Well, we actually have an answer to that as Rockstar introduced a brand new GTA Plus event period, and that is lasting through June 24th, 2024. So we now know that the next GTA Online update is going to be coming out on June 25th, a Tuesday. Perfect timing for Rockstar, and it's also perfect timing for everything they described that they wanted to do in the update like celebrating Independence Day and more, because this gives us really a full week before Rockstar has to dive into the Independence Day, 4th of July style content. So that roughly means we are about two weeks away from this DLC arriving. Hopefully over the next couple of days or so, Rockstar will give us some more details on what to expect in this update. But for now, there's actually a couple of other things we can gather from the Newswire text itself. And one of those things is actually the German version of the Rockstar Newswire. So in the English version, it says this. This summer, it's time for some high-value target practice to clean up the roving retrobates of Southern San Andreas with your very own bail enforcement and bounty hunting business. However, on the German version, it says all of that, but it implies that some of it is going to be taking place in Grapeseed. And that is certainly an interesting location, just considering Grapeseed is not all that big. It's one of the smallest parts of the map. It's basically just a little town and farm area with a tiny, tiny airport runway. So there isn't a whole lot that goes on in Grapeseed. And it kind of made you wonder if A, this was a typo or just a translation error, or if it was something that Rockstar meant for maybe like one of the missions or something like that, not necessarily like the entire update would take place there. Well, just a few hours later, Rockstar Games made another change, and on the German newswire, that quote in Grapeseed is now missing. So Rockstar Games either corrected it because they said, okay, that doesn't make sense, or they removed it because they didn't want to spoil things that were going to be happening in the DLC itself. I don't know if we're ever going to get the answer to that. I guess we'll certainly find out when the DLC arrives, but it looks like some part of this update could be taking place in Grapeseed, if the German newswire is correct. Now, on the subject of this DLC or some of its missions taking place in Grapeseed, we heard from Rockstar Games insider Tez Funds 2, who responded to someone that said, and besides, it's not a big secret, because many resource missions have many location variants, the question is how the game will manage it in terms of bounty in such an area. With Tez Funds 2 saying, yep, the second option doesn't make sense. It's more so that we will operate the bounty hunting missions from where Mod is located, which is in Grapeseed. And you can expect Rockstar to manage the bounty targets the same as any new content post-2020, offering three or more variations for various mission types, and the target is randomized each time. Perhaps with a minimum distance check too, a 500 meter area around Mod's place would look something like this. Any targets in Grapeseed would still be eligible, with another person saying, Also, I don't want to say nonsense, but what if there are a lot of players in the session? The game won't launch the same mission for everyone, right? It's the same with resource missions to the bunker, MC, business, CEO crates, import, export, etc., right? If a player has Mission X activated, the game must spawn in another place for another person. With him saying, yep, Rockstar comes up with various mission types and about three variants per type, ensuring it covers up the maximum number of CEOs and MCs within a session. That's also why the CEO slash MC limit is needed, despite how nice of a quality of life improvement it would have if it was removed. So those are some good opinions right there. Maud Eccles, who's going to be, I would assume, in charge of our bounty hunting program. She is located in Grapeseed, so maybe that's what the German version of the Newswire was trying to imply, that that's where things will start, not necessarily where they will 100% 
take place. Now, there's a couple more things we can learn from the Newswire as well. One of the things that players were looking at was the screenshot that Rockstar Games showed off with our two characters wearing the bail enforcement agent vest. What's kind of interesting about this is when you actually go to the mobile version of the Newswire, you'll notice that the bail enforcement agent sort of patch or sticker or whatever it is, is suddenly gone. I don't know if this is a bug or an error or an over site from Rockstar, but it suddenly and weirdly just completely vanishes. Not sure what that means. A couple of other things that you can notice from the Newswire screenshot as well. That is a brand new tent for the stun gun. So expect more of those to be added in this update. This one looks like it's utilizing sort of like a bright blue and red pattern. Pretty cool stuff right there. A lot of people were also wondering where this screenshot takes place. And it seems to be very, very similar to the Mission Row police station cells. But it seems like Rockstar has modified the interior a little bit. So it seems like this has been getting updated or it has a new interior or it has some more assets because there are some things that are matching, but there also are some things that are a little bit different. So I don't know if this is where we're going to be taking the people that we uh, sort of arrest on bail or bounty hunting, but it looks like that is the most obvious spot. This interior could also be located at the Vespucci Beach Police Department, the same one where Vincent's missions take place. There's a good chance this could be made into an interior and also act as a base of operations. Now moving on, one thing that's very clear is that this is going to be sort of a repurposed Cops and Crooks update. We heard from Rockstar Games insider Tez Funds 2 again, who said, sounds mildly interesting, repurposed Cops and Crooks content, not a surprise with GTA 6 coming next year, responding to someone saying Cops and Crooks itself would have been far better, so I do hope that at least a bunch of assets from there will end up being reused. With them saying, yep, the best part about the CNC update wasn't just the concept of being a cop, it was the range of changes planned with that update. Changes to the crime system, which has remained the same since 2013, where street crimes are reported to cop players, making the gameplay more responsive during the mode. Changes to the UI of wanted levels, new audio for switching between a cop and a crook, and possibly changing the character switching interface too. Changes to the HUD for that mode, the type of changes you wouldn't expect to see with this summer update. So long story short, we know this is going to be a repurposed Cops and Crooks update that was supposed to come out in the summer of 2020. So expect there to be a lot of cool stuff added, but not necessarily the level of detail that we were going to expect back then, especially since now Rockstar is all hands on deck with developing GTA 6. Now there was some more follow up as someone said, without introducing new game mechanics, I'm not even sure how this works. You chase someone down and shoot them. Imagine if you could chase someone down, tase them, cuff them, and take them to jail. With Tez Funds 2 saying Rockstar worked on an arresting mechanic for the original Cops and Crooks mode prior to the game's release. And even if that doesn't work, they can apply the same busted mechanic from single player. Tase or aim at a crook, he surrenders, and you escort him to the cruiser to deliver him to the police station. So I imagine that is roughly how things are going to work in this update that we'll be getting soon, our, our new version of Vigilante Justice. Now, last but not least, we can actually talk about some of the vehicles that might be arriving in this DLC. We know one of them in particular is going to be a supercar, the Overflawed Pipistrello. That is the only one that has been confirmed by Rockstar. We also know it'll be available for free on day one for GTA Plus members, and it'll also be available on the first day of release, which is something that Rockstar will not be giving away to normal players. But these are the vehicles that were slated for the summer 2020 update. Now, some of them might have already been repurposed, but there's a good chance we see some of them, like a third version of the Surfer, a vehicle called the Zoku, a police version of the Bati, a police version of the Buffalo, police gauntlet, police Granger, police vehicle number five and six, police B2, police T2, a police version of the Panto, a police version of the Caracara, a police version of the Riata, and a police version of the Greenwood. Again, some of those might have already been repurposed into other vehicles, but there's a chance that some of them on this list 
will be included in the next DLC. But anyways, that is all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today, and that is everything we know so far about the next Grand Theft Auto Online update that will be arriving on June 25th in just a couple of weeks. Again, hopefully Rockstar provide us some new information shortly, but for now, that should get you caught up to speed on everything you need to know before this DLC arrives. Let me know what you think about it in those comments down below. I would certainly love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You want to stay up to date on all the GTA and Rockstar Games videos that I'll be doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.